So welcome to a new Paradigm of Education podcast. This is Monique Sayers and I'm here today with Chloe Paniatu. I'd like to introduce our podcast is sharing a new paradigm of education is here to empower our students and the future generations. It's not just simply about talking to teachers about what they believe education is, because we all know that's the old form of education. A new paradigm of education brings together mentors, entrepreneurs, psychologists, um, parents, educators from across the world, anybody who has an interest in education for our children in making a better future for them. So, you know, the world as we have known has um, completely shifted through the pandemic and also globally through uh, energetic processes. So that's what the creation of a new paradigm of education originated from. So I'm really, really excited to introduce today's guest. So we have with us Chloe and she is a former school psychologist and she's also a visionary and co-founder of Mindfully Loved. So I'd love to hear a bit about um, your background and a little introduction from yourself, Chloe. Of course. Hello, Monique. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. Um, so as you said, yes, I am um, a school psychologist. I worked for in schools for the last now almost yeah, eight, nine years now. And um, as you said, recently have been focusing more on our new mission of Mindfully Loved. So I am, I've studied in America where I studied psychology and hypnotherapy. So I've been working through with um, clients, through private clinics, schools, youth organizations, and now have been studying our mission of Mindfully Loved. So we have been very passionate in give empowering parents, empowering future parents really, in creating that healing, that self-awareness in order to give the children the best opportunity in life to be free of limiting beliefs and trauma and allowing their kids to create that self-awareness, that self-compassion, that self-love within them. So through that, we've been, um, my, myself and my husband, we've been starting our own healing journey. And through that, and by working from schools, I've realized that our, you know, new paradigm of education is really needed. <laughs> and working in mainstream schools have noticed so much holdbacks. And this is why I'm, in a way, stepping back from that mainstream and hoping to empower the new paradigm of education through a different way. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And just for everybody who's listening, so she was a psychologist in Australian based schools because we have listeners from all over the world. So yes. um, yeah. I'd love to hear more. So you've explained a little bit about Mindfully Loved, but I'd like to hear more about what you're saying about these values that you're talking about. You've talked about self love and some other types of values that you're empowering with. Could you just go into detail? about what those values mean or what they are of exactly? Of course, of course. So a monthly loved, our mission is really give, creating that education around self-awareness, self-compassion, self-love, kindness, resilience. We are really big advocates of going within, dive deep, dive deep, and really focusing on what's happening within our body, what's happening within our mind, within our thoughts, within our feelings and why they're there. We really big advocates that sort of awareness in regardless of your age it's the first step of starting that change start change for the future generation that change for our future children once we become aware of what's happening within us at every interaction um with what thoughts we're having what are feelings or thoughts are bringing up what's happening within our body and in knots in our stomach it gives us a bit of a understanding of what we can heal what we can work on, what we can really focus on. If something is feeling good within us, then we know it's, it feels right within us all. If we say something, for example, if we're having an argument with a partner of our children and instantly we say something and then an hour later we're noticing, oh, what I said maybe wasn't the nicest thing to them. If that's self-awareness. And what we're hoping with that is eventually it might, you know, initially it might be an hour, two hours later, then it might be 10 minutes later, we're becoming aware of what, oh, I said that 10 minutes later, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Eventually it happens quicker. We're becoming aware of what we just said a minute later. And then um. we're starting to catch ourselves right before we say it. So we're training, we're retraining our brain to becoming aware of what we're about to say. What that, you know, what our husband said triggered a response within us, brought those emotions. But before I, I go out and say it, what am I about to say? What would that cause? So allowing myself to like, oh, I'm needing a break. I need to remove myself. I need to communicate what's coming out kindly, compassionately, without judgment. 
because at the end of the day what we all want is to be loved to be accepted you know so in when we create that compassion within ourselves and our partner or a child or any family members and friends are around us we create a relationship that's giving each other what we really want and what our core really needs that acceptance and love mm, that's beautiful Hope that makes sense <laughs> no it does it does make sense so are you helping who do you help exactly with this is it families is it children like and and the other thing is like exactly how do you do it like you're saying okay i have a thought but then what if somebody's mm -hmm. not conscious like how do they suddenly become conscious or know mm -hmm. that they're having this trigger or this this thought because it's easy mm -hmm. to say that but could you translate that down for somebody who's of to course learn? Yes. So Mindful Love at the moment, we're focusing on future parents. So we have e-courses and programs and e-books for other future parents. So couples that are either getting married now or are just wanting to take the um, relationship to the next, next step. They might not be looking to have children now, but mm -hmm. in the future, they're hoping to be parents. So they yes. want to start this healing process at the moment. But we're also working with expecting parents. So parents are actually expecting at the moment. So helping them set up a plan, helping them set up the first few um, first few years of parenthood together. So going back to your question and how to become aware, there's so many exercises and it's all about starting with becoming aware of our soft talk. Mm -hmm. That is the first step. Really, really sitting down and catch ourselves. What do I say to myself when I make a mistake? What do I say to myself when I accomplish something? What do I say to myself when someone points something that I'm not doing well? Feedback. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's really catching yourself and really listening to your thoughts. And most of us, unless we really sit down and um, acknowledge, recognize and think about, oh, what happened just now? What am I thinking? Our thoughts just come unconsciously. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we don't realize them so mm -hmm. it, it's a skill that you have to practice journaling is really good with that mm -hmm. being able to acknowledge see that down at the end of the day and write a few things that happened during the day and what did I think when that happened what did I what went through my mind when my husband pointed this to me um when my partner said that I'm doing this wrong what are those beliefs that are coming into my mind what is the story that I'm telling myself and the more you voice it out, the more you write it down, the more you communicate, the more you become aware, the easier it is to tap into those thoughts. So then once you figure out if you have more negative self-talk or more positive self-talk, that's where the work happens. We target the um, negative self-beliefs, the limiting beliefs, the negative self-talk. If you're making a mistake, if you're putting yourself down, what, you know, what happens within your body? Mm -hmm. When you're telling yourself, then there's shame, there's an embarrassment, then there's the guilt, all those feelings are starting to bubble into your body. How does that feel in your body? So it's really about teaching our clients to really drop in and notice what's happening within the bodies. Are your shoulders curved in? Are your shoulders, are you open up? What's happening within your chest? Do you have heaviness in your chest? What's happening in your tummy? Do you have knots in your tummy? So really helping them tap into the simple things of what's happening. What's your breathing? Are you breathing shallow? Or are you having slow breaths? And once we start pointing out those little things they're becoming aware of those things so if they catch themselves breathing shallow they know they can stop that by taking a deep breath if they catch themselves you know um clenching their fists or putting their shoulders up and curving they know they can change that physiology by putting their shoulders back releasing the um their fists the same thing happens with their thoughts the moment they catch themselves having that circuit negative talk oh i'm not i'm i'm not good at anything which is something that we all say, I'm not good at this. Start challenging them. Okay, is that really true? Are you really not good at anything? Yeah, and most of us are like, well, not really. I'm good at drawing. I'm good at writing. I'm just not good at painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so start challenging those thoughts really and questioning, okay, so what I'm telling myself that I'm not good at anything, it's not true. So how can I change this? I'm not, I'm not as good as painting yet. So bringing this growth mind, mindset in, um, really that having a fixed mindset that telling ourselves that we're not good at anything, grow, expanding our mind. We're not good at something yet. And what can we do? If we want to change this, we have the ability to do so. If I want to become better at painting, maybe I could look into a class. Maybe I can practice more. You know, so allowing that, that we, we're growing and changing and adapting constantly. And there's nothing that tells us that this is who we are right now.
it can mm. be different tomorrow. Mm. That's beautiful. And I feel like if we empower ourselves, then we can also empower our children. And I feel like this is something yes. that would work with children as well. Like, did you have experience mm -hmm. of that? I mean, being a psychologist, did you use some of these tools with children? I'd love to hear how they responded to journaling or using some growth yeah. mindset tools or something when they came to see you, or is there anything like that yeah. you could share? Oh, for sure. So I guess I could also tell you what made me go into more working with the future parents. I loved, I loved, and I still do working, I love working with kids with them. I do have some private clients still, and it, it's amazing to be able to teach them those skills because you tell them having this skill will help you and will empower you so much as an adult. And sometimes I'm honest with my with the kids and I tell them, you know, this skill, I have I have adults that still don't know how to use this. So you as a 10-year-old, as an eight year eight year old, be able to tap into journaling or even mindfulness, dropping mm. into the present moment. Um, gratitude is something that we really teach with our kids. And they, you know, it's very beneficial and they all love it. However, what I did find myself feeling um, at school sometimes is that feeling of helplessness, seeing the kids once, you know, 30 minutes or one hour a week, having been able to empower them during that session, but then knowing the moment they leave out, the room and going into the teachers classrooms or home they're not exposed to all those skills they're not exposed to that language wow. that we're learning in the sessions so I found that it was kind of kind of productive I'm trying to teach them all those um lots of awareness that's of loving behavior language that soft talk but the modeling that they have at home the modeling that they may even have in classrooms with other kids and the teachers it was just a little bit kind of productive and I wanted to see this change and I think I wasn't seeing it as quickly as I wanted and I knew that it was there was a little bit of a block with the families so I think I was kind of thinking what where can I make the biggest impact and I'm like yeah parents of course parents and then I'm like mm. well, how about we go even a step further a step back and work with couples that are looking to become parents in the next few years what an amazing, I guess, ability and um, skills to be able to, for them to use in the relationship as well, to build the relationship. So they enter parenthood, feeling empowered within themselves, but as well as in the relationship, to be able yeah. to teach those things through modeling as well. That's really beautiful. Mm. I really love yeah. that. I wanted to ask some more deeper questions just out of interest, because I really yes. believe gratitude also is like, um, very profound mm. for everybody to shift energy. Did you yes. teach children gratitude in a certain way or did it just, did it change every time you would teach them? Like, did you have certain activities that you did or was it like, um, depending on the child? Yeah. So with kids, I've noticed that the generic question of what you're grateful for, it's a very hard one for them. Yeah. So we go, yeah. So we go very back to basic. Oh, what made you smile today? Ah. What made you feel um, knots in your tummy for more excitement? What made you giggle or what, um, what did you, let's look around and kind of getting them to use their senses. Let's look around. What's something that um, warms your heart when you look around here? What's something where you feel safe in this room? Find this. Little scum in the hands are really awesome as well. Let's find something where you feel loved. So ah. it might be something that where people I gave them as a present, where you feel safe, where you feel calm, you know, so using those emotions uh, for kids, it's really about how it's making them feel. Mm. Um, it's for them, you know, when you ask them what you're grateful for, the struggling, they might even just say my family, my friends, very generic, which is, you know, that's, that's great as well. But what I really focus on, it's the little things. Let's look at side looking at the trees, looking at the birds. How is that making you feel? So really appreciating the little things. Let's go for a walk. Let's focus on the body. How are we grateful for our legs, for letting us walk, allowing us to walk? When If you're good at drawing or if you, you have a skill, let's focus what's helping you within your body to create, to do this. Your fingers, your hands, your movement. So really tapping into these little ones. And something really important with the kids is, as well as, and we all do it, is when we say to our kids, okay, say thank you. You know, when you when they receive something, what's the magic word? And without explaining to them the really underlying importance of gratitude. So when we when they get, when they receive a gift or something, it's like, oh, how did that make you feel when I gave you this? Mm. How did, you know, so it's really bringing it back to that emotion. 
how is it making you feel when someone does something to you? Yeah. You know, when your friend helped you up when you fell, how did that make you feel? Mm. So really, it's really showing them and getting them to tap into that emotion of gratitude rather than just saying thank you. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And with kids, you can visualize, you can use drawing. Let's draw something that really excited you today. So, mm. and then getting them to talk about that picture. I love so that. Yeah. And something that I told the te- their parents at the end of the day, you know, rather than tell them, oh, you know, what was, um, how was school or what was great, what, what are you grateful about school? Really, tell me three things that um, you worked hard today and you achieved or three things that you played at school or three things that your friends did for you or that you did for them. So really focus on that behavior and that emotion rather than just a generic, what are you grateful for? Yeah, I totally agree. I really love I really yeah. love what you're sharing because I've had so many children that I've taught in the classroom. You ask them how they are and sometimes they like, oh, I don't know. And they kind of like struggle to give you an answer of how they feel. They yes. haven't learned how they how mm. they haven't learned emotional awareness. Intelligence. And yeah. No. A lot of people, I mean, the way that we've been taught, especially even as a teacher, we're not really taught to kind of share all of our emotions. Some of the emotions, like for example, if I'm sitting out the front and I'm sad, I don't usually say, hi students, today I'm sad because I'm expected yeah. to to be a certain yeah. style. And so in a way that needs to be undone, I feel like in the new paradigm mm-hmm. that everybody is able to learn how to express how they are regardless of More transparency yeah yes. and regardless of judgment like I just had an image of these little stones or something that you could gather mm. and you could have like names on the stones of feelings or something I don't know where that came from but just what I was thinking yeah. that, that just tapped I in and I, I really love what you're sharing um about bringing it home as well to share that um mm. that gift of gratitude at home and what do you do with the child's, like the, the children, when they say like, you know, you're looking at the clouds and they're like, oh, I don't feel anything or I feel angry or they, they don't feel the gratitude. How do you, mm-hmm. what do you do then with them? Do you just accept them or do you show, do you try and show them what it could be? Or I'm just curious about that. Gratitude is such a big topic for me. It's like you do the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, same here. I'm very passionate about gratitude. So. <laughs> I, I use nature a lot with the children and I feel like nature is a really big part, especially around gratitude. And this is where we're losing it a little bit with our um, with the kids at the moment with a lot of technology and they don't spend a lot of time outside. So even just taking them outside and start by looking at the clouds mm. yeah, without really um, putting any guidelines and allow the imagination to come just by looking at the clouds and let picking them, picking out different shapes. Start really simple. And then educating the purpose of clouds I think I think we need to start from that educating their purpose of cloud like why do we have clouds and start this that conversation do you know why we have clouds do you know the purpose of the clouds mm. and really educating around how you know some clouds hold to rains you know it's that it's you know just humidity kind of comes up together so really explaining and why do we have that and how amazing it is when those dark clouds come and ah, the rain comes down right. and then it waters our garden if you have if they have veggie gardens or flowers and then with that it brings out the insects so really kind of create that um journey around what happens with the rain how important that is for earth and how mm. we need that because obviously we need to breathe we need air we need trees we need oxygen we need food so really bring in that and then after you educate it's like oh i wonder like you know, when you when you think of the class and you think how much it gives us, how important it is, how does mm. that make you feel with your body? Mm. You know, so really, because gratitude can be taught. Obviously, it's it's really about teaching how they can connect those little things. Yeah. And then the same thing can happen with insects, because I know a lot of us now there's a lot of fear around bees and insects and ah, you know, want to kill them instantly. So even just taking that step back and educating them the importance of those insects and they can look scary. They can be a little bit scary, but they are causing, you know, that we are need. They're needed in our uh, planet, and they're needed in our ecosystem. And let's let's look. Let's sit here and observe the ants. Let's look how they're doing, what they're doing, and mm-hmm. while they're holding these little foods on, they so really creating little stories around those um, insects, little parts of it. Mm. Oh wow, that's cool. I really love how yeah. you specified that. I never considered that. 
And I guess my teacher brain keeps kicking in and I'm like, wow, and that links to science. <laughs> that links yeah. to art. That links to writing. Yeah. All of yeah, exactly. one, there's like one lesson in this little ant farm, isn't exactly. there? Exactly. Like, yes. Yes. That, you know, that, that in itself, take the children outside. Yeah. And even if you're a parent yes. or a teacher listening, mm. just take your children outside and do it yes. for a bit. And you're also empowering them with gratitude at the same moment. Mm. And yeah. I feel that's so, so, so important. Did you find yes. also educators in the classroom were able to bring mindfulness into the classrooms or was that something that was um, not so much weight in your experience or? This, it depends. I'm sure you know there's, there's teachers that are more passionate about it than others. I have, you know, we have brought in a lot of programs in where we went and taught it and kids did it for you know, a series of months and we saw great, great results. What one thing that I do, and we have any educators listening, one thing that I would definitely advise is if you are bringing one for us into your into your classroom, do it as well. You know, mm, if we have a lot of mindfully, actually, at the mindfully time when they're meditating or drawing or reading, and the teachers are just sitting on their laptops, catching up on work because that's how it is. That is your time to catch up on emails and other things. But it's so important if you join in, if you model that behavior you sit there with your eyes closed and meditate or if you choose to do monthly coloring you do that as well just sit there and take that time for yourself as well you're not just modeling that for um, for your classroom but it's so beneficial for yourself as well to have those 10 minutes where you quiet in your mind where you're just dropping into your body and take advantage of that break I know at that point we and I know how busy teachers are and they're just needing minutes to just catch up on things I know that you will be so much more productive when you do take that five, 10 minute break to just drop into mindfulness. Totally. And there's so many ways of doing it. I'm, I'm sure you know, but the teachers really need to be involved for their own benefit as well. It's great. Yeah. For them. And yeah. I think also even um, parents listening, um, parents listening as well. Like I know, for example, my myself like I'm quite often online doing meditation and I didn't know but my daughter just started to suddenly drop to the floor and do meditation yes. without me yes. teaching her and then like sometimes she'll come and she'll bounce around in the background she'll probably come on this podcast yes. and start bouncing around in a minute but she's always there like it's like she's feeling my energy at that moment when I'm exactly. regulated and when I'm peaceful and she's like boom I want that and the other day yes. she just sat down and she just like she had her fingers like <laughs> you know like ready so to go on her lap and um and was just meditating and I was like wow Oh, this is like she's four and I was just like wow this really oh, just wow. shows me shows me the impact of role modeling first exactly. like I know it as a teacher but as a parent I was just really astounded mm. I saw it from different a different lens of course you don't realize but, how many things they take in yeah absolutely totally. yeah. everything yeah and also yeah. when I was teaching as well I noticed for myself that was a game changer in my life before I was um into mindfulness and meditation my yeah. skills in the classroom were so different. The way I managed yes. the children, the whole chaos of the classroom was completely different mm. to when I finally just took time to meditate or even yeah, energy play, changes. Yeah, and just even play some music like before the children mm. arrived. Like it just set the yes. scene for the day. And I felt so good inside. I had energy to mm. give them. I felt joyous. And it really yeah. was profound. It was like teaching mm. without having to do anything because it was all done through happiness. It was just so much easier. I was like, why doesn't everybody yes. do this? Exactly. I know. You know. And mindfulness doesn't have to be, yeah, just sitting there with your eyes closed sitting still you know you can go exactly what we just said before you can go outside and lay and look at the clouds and just noticing it's really just kind of that stillness being the present moment sit there and look at the trees moving looking mm. at the wind or staring at the little ants with with your kids so really it's just doing something intentionally and yeah. really being in that present moment because I know it's, you know putting kids there to sit still it's not the easiest but Go for a walk and just notice what you can see. You know, really just being, do a little game. Let's think five red things that we can find. So really allow your senses to come out and kind of walk quietly and noticing how you're walking, noticing the colors around you. So it's really about coming back to the present moment. Mm, mm. I really love that. Yeah. And so when you're teaching this to your parents, do you also incorporate? Mm like tangible things they can do like for mindfulness you've explained to me kind of values and like you've explained journaling and stuff like is every session different or do you have certain things that you show them like in terms of mindfulness and things as well or so 
so that we, depending on our program and ECOS are very different, but oh, um, different. I'll talk about our ECOS because it's, it's, um, it's a four week um, ECOS that the, the parents are doing. And we start with self-awareness and that's where we talk about um, tapping into their self-talk, but also the values. What values have been, they've been living their lives by? And if, if it, are those values their own things that, or are the values that were passed down from their parents? Mm. You know, so, so for example, if a family really values hard work, is that something that you want to embed in your life right now? Or is it something that your parents and grandparents said, we value hard work here and you, you know, trying to live your life by. So really redefining our values. And from that, really defining what beliefs come from those values. And if we have any beliefs that are holding us back, that you have to work, you have to work really hard 50 hours a week in order to be successful, you know, and then start questioning those thoughts. Okay, that's, is that a thought that you really is holding you back now? Or is that something that you want to change? So we then we work into reframing that. And then we move into module two, which is more about accepting and letting go. So accepting other um, some traumas in our life, things that happened in the past, our beliefs that have been holding us back and really fully accepting ourselves. And by accepting doesn't mean that we say what happened to us was okay, you know, in the past. It was more about accepting that it did happen mm. and it's brought me from where I am right now. And I'm accepting myself fully, even though I have weaknesses, even though I have hurt and pain within me, I accept myself fully. And then choosing to let go of things that we don't want to live our life by. And there's a lot of exercises that we did through that. And then we move into forgiveness, which is a really, really big part where it's more about either forgiving ourselves, forgiving people that hurt us in the past. And also there's a lot of uh, work that we do around forgiving our future child, if it's for expected parents or future parents. And um, there's a lot of work there because we know that as, as you become a parent, there's a lot of changes that are happening, you know, as your, your lifestyle and as a person. And sometimes there's that unconscious resentment that we have towards our child that, oh, like now that I just can't go out whenever I want and you're always holding me back and we're always like all those things. So really allowing ourselves to write all those things down before we even become a parent. So we kind of let go of all those things non-judgmentally. So we're doing this all non-judgmentally and we focus on that. Everything that we do, all the work that we do, there's no guilt attached, there's no shame attached, there's no judgment attached. And then we focus on the last module, which is continue to grow like that growth. And that's where we work more about creating family rituals and exercise around gratitude, vision boards, uh, family manifestors. So um, be able to create the family um, image that you are inspiring to, you know, what, what values will your family hold strongly? And how would that look like in your daily life? What will be your priorities? And then also as and this this uh, course is happening with a couple. So having that discussion with your you know with your partner, how do you know what do we how do we want to tackle this and how do we want to tackle this and how do we communicate to each other? When I'm overwhelmed, how can I tell you that I need help without that kind of passive aggressive <laughs> you know tonality you know thing that we usually all do? And we practice that communication as well. Okay, let's practice that I need help. How do I say that to you? And how do you respond? How do I would like you to respond to that? When I want to vent, how do you respond to me? And, you know, so there's a lot of things. It's a very, a lot of exercises back and forth that we do and a lot of visualizations. So I do have a lot of hypnosis scripts that I give the, um, the future parents as well to listen to. And it's all about opening their unconscious up and tapping into more things that might come up as well. Mm, that's very very um, yeah. beautiful it reminds me actually of the journey of the old paradigm into the new paradigm mm. like um like for me when I was feeling the energy of writing the book a new paradigm of education it was letting go of everything yes. the traumas in yes. education the traumas in myself mm. the traumas in the children the debunking of all these kind of systems and beliefs and like mm. what you're saying about working hard, like children don't need that. We don't need to have, like, if we have that mentality, I'm going to work hard. We're going to be passing that on to our child. And what I feel like the new paradigm is, is like, I actually see schools where they're non-structured from this nine to five thing. Like at the moment we have this structure where it's like, okay, school is five days a week. Okay. Work is five days a week. 
but actually no not anymore we're in a new paradigm right like yes the whole world changed since the pandemic yeah. and that's just all gone like we've seen schools Thanks. you know different hours yeah like work at home mm. work in other places people becoming yeah. entrepreneurs and we can I, still be a productive yeah totally so it's yeah. like creating from this new this new way and I love that mm. your last module is like that aspect of the creating and the birth and I also love the clearing aspect because um to create a new paradigm first the, the clearing of the old needs to come through yes. and then the birthing the birthing of the new is, the is new. being created and everything exactly. and I, I think that moves into another question because obviously it's my passion around is a new paradigm and I'm that's why I'm getting this podcast and writing a book and asking all these people in the world about a new paradigm when it came to me it was never about me Monique having the answers of this right it was this collaboration mm. and this wisdom of like being a wisdom keeper and then just asking people well what is it that we need like what is it that we don't need what is it that we do need so I'd love to ask you that question you can answer it from whatever way you like but what do you believe yeah. is a new paradigm of education you can share about the old and the new or, or however it, it yes. flows for you yeah well for me really it's bringing back that self-awareness into our children really teaching our children how to listen to their bodies how to regulate their emotions safely and how to use empowering self-talk really teaching them that there are beautiful beings the way they are. They don't have to be great at everything and remove that shame, remove that um, judgment that all kids have that they're not good enough. So really going back to that self-love, self-care, self-compassion and self-awareness, teach them that mistakes and failure are part, of, are part of growth and allow them to expand a connection with the inner self, with nature and teach them that kind, you know, kindness within ourselves starts first. In order to be kind to others and our planet, we need to be kind to ourselves. And let's work on that. Let's teach them how to do that safely. And it goes back to starting with emo emotional intelligence, really teaching them how do you voice how they're feeling, using the language of emotions from very young. And rather than just say, say how are you feeling good? You know, the, you know, good is where I always get really, and that comes from us using, using, using the emotions ourselves, you know, going to our partner and saying, I was really angry when this happened, you know, really allowing ourselves to voice those things and then teach them how to regulate those emotions. When it's okay to, it's okay to scream when you're angry, but how can we do it safely without hurting yourself, without hurting others, and by allowing yourself to be in a safe spot giving them the power back to connect with themselves and the nature. A new paradigm of education, I think, needs to definitely incorporate nature as well. Mm. That eco aspect, you know, how growing our own veggies, how we connect with our own veggies, respecting our environment and teaching them how to, any, any um, behavior that they take needs to be intentional. You know, how would that affect our environment? How would that affect others? How would that affect myself? And that, you know, then moves into life skills into, because as we know, you know, new, in our old paradigm of education, there's not any life skills in regards to um, exploring what brands you want to buy or accounting or finances. So even doing that intentionally, teaching them all those skills intentionally. So, and, you know, and in removing that materialistic fast-paced life and moving back into a more intentional slow life where they can go outside and enjoy without having a hundred thousand toys around we don't need much let's use that imagination let's use our creativity and allow our kids to just be kids without holding them back mm. There's a lot of things there. <laughs> no, that's that's yeah. No, it's very it's very beautiful. It's very yeah. aligned with um with the people that I've written the book about. There was mm. eight different authors that we had from around the world. We weren't authors, okay. educators, parents, etc. Yes. And um, everybody was saying the same thing. Like everybody yes. was saying, let's get back into nature. Let's get back mm. into values. You know, let's remove yes. all of the other things that the constraints that is all there and the boxes and the the yes. shapes of things that we don't need and just get fluid with nature it's really beautiful I love asking that question it's amazing everybody I've asked has the same answer just in their yes. own little, <laughs> little way it's so beautiful and um I'd love to ask you too like um about if you could imagine or dream about any type of schools of the future like because I, I mm. feel like 
the new paradigm, it can go in so many different directions and there's no set way that it has to be. But I just imagine like um, what's going to be for the highest good or what do you feel would be amazing like to create if you could create a school or something like that, if you call it a school oh, even. Maybe it's called yes. community, a community yeah. or whatever. Like, <laughs> Which I know we've chatted about this, but, you know, we both have dreams of creating our own school in the future. Yeah. And um, so I've had that vision so many times. And, yes, it, for me, it will be a school community. So, because uh, I truly believe that having parents around or providing education to parents, workshops to parents, it's a big deal as well. So, from I, I see it as a school community where um, my vision is an eco sustainable school where we focus on that self love, that self care, that self compassion, resilience, and self awareness. Everything that we bring into our school is natural, natural materials. Um, eco-friendly, non-toxic, because we at the same time want to help uh, teach our kids that whatever we put in our body, whatever we put it within our environment, it's affecting everything. It's a holistic approach of education. And we use, for example, if we're teaching gratitude, we use that across all subjects because, as you know, we can incorporate all that. And a lot of nature outside playing, a lot of play-based um, and kind of free play, really, allowing the kids to free play and through that having teaching moments. But for me, it's really going back to teaching them to listen to the bodies, trusting their intuition, trusting their bodies, knowing that they are very powerful themselves without any doubt, without any really allowing them to use that creativity, that um, visualisation and imagination to mm. really come up with any answers because we know our kids we know our kids have those those powerful um skills but as a society we take them away from them we hold them back you know we shame them for being really imaginative we mm. shame them for you know just running free and well no no you have to you know sit the certain way act the certain way it's embarrassing if you don't so we we don't realize how quickly we add shame into them and for them they create that belief that okay, I shouldn't be this way because I'm not accepted if I'm if I'm carefree and yeah. Mm, there's, a lot, love, there's a lot more, but that's yeah, yeah, the yeah, basis. No, <laughs> I I love all of that. I I um I hear you on all of that, and I was just reflecting on kind of the restrictions that we place on ourselves is then placed onto mm -hmm. the children, and then also that becomes placed onto the environment. Is like limitations and like a new paradigm is yeah limitless like completely limitless mm -hmm. and I love how you're sharing if we can just allow children to be children and be themselves that there's that confidence um, that allows them to trust who they are and from there they can just create what they want to create and mm -hmm. um, yeah like I have so many different ideas it just reminded me this is like a simple example I was teaching maths um, to a child the other day and she gave me this amazing answer it had nothing to do with maths it was like one of those you know those questions where they ask you like 50 different things to solve a problem yeah. and I was like this girl is awesome she knows so much like she had like yes. all of this stuff and I just was, I was just there thinking, oh my gosh. And I said to her, you know, for this answer, they want you to give a number, but you know what, yeah. your answer is so much better because you are so creative and look at all these ways that you can do things. And there's like yeah. so many limitations on these like old rigid ways of doing exactly. things. And her answer was just perfect. And I was like, oh, I was just empowering her. Like I was writing in her report, all the empowering stuff. I didn't write like, <sighs> oh, she doesn't know what, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> five plus five is or whatever it was. That wasn't it. Yeah. But, you know, like I was yeah. like, wow, she's a creative thinker. She's got good yes. problem solving skills. And I was really just making sure that I was focusing on the things that is going to help her in life and you know what this is the type of people that will be solving and changing the world the ones that are thinking exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you could have easily just said no that's wrong you know I would have really kind of created a belief like okay my openness thinking my creative thinking it's not a you know it's a no-no yeah because totally. that's what my teacher told me yeah so it's so amazing how we it as teachers as well and educators really important to become aware of ourselves and how do we want to respond to all those things and especially if you are still um, working at a mainstream school which is so hard because you have to follow those guidelines but really practice different ways of giving feedback without just saying no that's wrong you know or let's really focusing on that strength strength-based approach really encouraging and really praising that creative thinking 
and it, it, it can be really hard when you know that you have to follow that mainstream all paradigm of education sometimes Certainly. Yeah. I just thought of um you know uh Renee Brown I was just thinking about mm -hmm. her work and I've been reading a lot yeah. about it lately like her manifestos and I feel like a lot of that stuff could be brought into schools like because it's still oh. giving children a goal you know because I feel like mm -hmm. at schools we're kind of giving them this assessment but what if they just had a goal rather than an assessment and then that was it yeah. and like you know the goal is to be more compassionate or the goal is yes. to okay my goal maybe is to problem solve in maths or whatever it is that the goal mm -hmm. is that they want it to be but to work on that and work on them together like a team together to it being yeah i just yes. had that i don't know why that came through just then yes. but i thought i'd share that as another so, idea. Oh, perfect i think that that would be yeah so perfect collaboratively you know we, we're making those assessments for them and those goals for them Meanwhile, they don't have any say. And even that, we're taking that power away from them. So by collaboratively, what do you want to work on? And that's another thing that we talk with the kids in my sessions, that we all have weaknesses and we all have strengths. Doesn't mean that we can't keep working on our strengths and improving our, on our weaknesses if we want to. And then allow them, what, what would you like to improve more? Giving them that power that they have the ability to continue to evolve and grow. Yes, awesome. Yeah. I love that mm. so much. Um, yeah. So before we wrap up, I think I'll just ask you, like, if people wanted to find you, how do they find you? And um, what's like, do you have any services that you offer them or things like that? We've talked a bit yes. about Mindfully Love, but you could share a bit more maybe if you wanted. Perfect. To. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So um, everyone can reach out to us on our website on mindfullyloved.com or on our socials, we're on Instagram and Facebook. And that's also Mindfully Loved, just one word. And we offer we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself. Uh, I do hypnosis recordings, so personalized hypnosis recordings on specific um, topics as well. And then we have our four-week equals for future parents. And we have an ebook for expected parents, which is a beautiful um 15 page questions and visualizations and reflections for couples to do as expecting to have a child and that work that uh, focuses more on creating that communication plan self-care um reflecting on your parenting roles the one you want to let go and all those things and then we also have a 12-week support program that's coming in in January and that will be for expecting parents and with that it will be a longer mentorship within a group of couples that are expecting and through that we go deeper into creating that self-awareness that self-love to support um, our couples to create a really good communication skills but then we're also incorporating this slow living approach as well how can we incorporate a slower life within our life as we start in parenthood and through that it's amazing because we have lots of live calls and they create a little community with other like-minded couples to help them as they're transitioning into the program mm, that's yeah. awesome I and there's so many more coming in the future yeah no yeah. it's very very useful for parents um or expecting parents to be able to prepare and i think it's it is one of the keys of the new paradigm because you know here we are with our children just sitting there and they need they need yes. somebody to kind of like they 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 already know what they need but at the same time they need that space holder to be there for them and to be exactly. present for them and i really love that that's your offering in this space yes. um yeah was there anything else you wanted to share before we we close our space for today <laughs> No, I think that's it. Just um, um, encouraging people to just join us on our socials. We would love to connect with more people and see what, you know, what they need us to help them with, support them with. So if you have any other ideas to, anyone, to your listeners, feel free to reach out to us on Mindfully Loved and we can see how we can incorporate those things in our future programs. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Chloe. And so thank, thank you, everybody. Nick. Yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in today to a new paradigm of education podcast. If you want to find us, we have a Facebook group as well, a new paradigm of education, as well as our book, International Bestseller, a new paradigm of education. So we'd love to hear from you if you're a, a parent, an educator, a change maker of the world around what is your vision for education and together we can all make a difference. Namaste, everybody. Bye.